Welcome to Metlecto. Today we are going to discuss lymph nodes. After watching this video, you will be able to understand what components are present in the lymph nodes and how lymph nodes work in the lymphatic system. Lymph node is basically a bean shaped structure. Its size is 1 mm to 20 mm. Let's start. Lymph node has two major components cortex and medulla here you can see uh, this is the this portion is the cortex cortex region which is shown by the black color this portion is cortex and below it the central area is the medulla and after that there is a hilum this is the hilum region Cortex is further divided into two, nodular cortex and paracortex. Nodular cortex are also called superficial. Here you can see this is actually, this portion is actually the nodular cortex or you can say superficial cortex and below it is the paracortex. This is the, this region is the paracortex region or deep cortex. And this central region is the medulla. I write it with M. M stands for medulla and hilum. Actually different lymph vessels. Here you can see lymph vessels through which the lymph enter into the lymph node. This is actually the afferent lymphatic vessel different. There are several afferent lymphatic vessel and they exit the lymph node through efferent lymphatic vessels. Here you can see there is a connective tissues over the lymph node which is called capsule. Capsule. This is actually the whole capsule region. And there are different, uh, here you can see different invagination occur through the capsule. Here difference, you can see different invagination. And these invagination are the trapeuli. Trapeuli. And when they move to the medullary region, it gives several branches. Now we will see how lymph flow in the lymph node. Here you can see first of all lymph enter the lymph node through the afferent lymphatic vessels. Here is there you can see. It opens into the sub. Okay. I will show it with black color. Subcapsular sinus or marginal sinus. Because it is below the capsule region, so we call it with subcapsular sinus. This is the subcapsular sinus. And after that, lymph flow through the cortical region. Because it attached to the cortical region, so we call it a cortical sinus. This is the cortical sinus. Other names are paratrapecular sinus or radial sinus. And after that, lymph will move into the medullary region. And from the medullary region, we call it medullary sinus. Here, lymph flow through medullary sinus. And after that, lymph ultimately exit the lymph node through the afferent lymphatic vessels. Now, here you can see different valves are present at the afferent or efferent. You can remember it by in alpha, a, alphabet A start first and E letter comes later. So afferent comes first and efferent later on. And several valves are present at their junction which which are involved in the unidirectional flow of the limb. So uh, you can see 
how lymph flow in the lymph node after lymphatic vessel then it will move into the subcapsular sinus or marginal sinus then cortical sinus paratrapular sinus or radial sinus then medullary sinus and then afferent lymphatic vessel and ultimately it drain into the blood stream so this is the uh, basic structure now we will see what components are present in cortex and medulla cortex is divided into two region nodular and paracortex region in nodular region, there are several nodules, primary nodules and secondary. There are two types of the nodules present in the nodular region. On the basis of the presence of the nodules present in this, we call it nodular region. Two types of the nodules, primary nodules and here is the secondary nodule primary nodules and secondary nodules and several cells are present in this region either reticular cell here here you can see the reticular cell r stand for reticular cell this is the macrophages m for macrophages and this is the follicular dendritic cell follicular dendritic cell Three types of the cells are present in the nodular cortex. Reticulocyte, macrophages and follicular dendritic cells. And next is the paracortex region which is a deep region and this is actually the several T lymphocytes are present in it. And here you can see this is the region which is above the nodular cortex is the marginal zone marginal zone now we will see uh, what components are present in the primary nodule and the secondary nodule in primary nodules b b lymphocyte b lymphocytes are present in the primary nodule this is inactive form and when B lymphocytes active it convert into the secondary nodule in secondary nodules B lymphocytes move toward the periphery of the nodule and they convert into two types B lymphocytes convert into the two types they can convert B memory cell memory cell or it can convert into the plasma cell plasma cell plasma cell and memory b cell comes towards the center and b lymphocytes will remain to the periphery of the nodes so this is the inactive form primary nodule is the inactive form and secondary nodules is the active form and in the paracortex region, T lymphocytes are present. Actually, this is the house of the B type. And this is the house of the T type. Here, next is the medulla, medullary region. Here you can see uh, different medullary sinus. And between the medullary sinus, here you can see, which is shown by the blue color, is the medullary cord. This is actually the region which is called medullary cord this is the medullary cord three types of the cells are present in the medullary cords first is the plasma cell which comes from this one we will see how plasma cells comes into the medullary cord and here is the macrophages which is shown by the red color and several reticulin fibers or reticulocytes are present in it because reticulous uh, sites form the fibers next we will see 
what how blood enter into the lymph node and drain from the or exit from the lymph node blood entered through the arteries then arteries convert into the arterioles and capillary capillaries convert into the venules here you can see this is the this enter into the lymph and after uh, it will convert into the veins or venules and exit through the lymph node but a special point at the paracortex region there is a special case here you can see normally epithelium are present in the venule but at several point different cuboidal cells are present in the venules here you can see this is the epithelium and between them are the cuboidal cells there are cuboidal cell present between the epithelium here you can see which is present in the paracortex it is called high endothelium venule h e v it has two main functions when lymphocytes move through the blood they these cuboidal cell have receptors and it capture the moving lymphocyte and move, uh, move into the and after that these lymphocytes move into the paracortex region it will exit from the venule and enter into the paracortex region two types of the lymphocyte b or t t lymphocytes remain in the paracortex region but the b lymphocytes will move into the nodules primary nodules aggregate and form a primary nodules this is the first function of the high endothelium venule second function is that several waters or electrolytes move from the nodes into the venule blood it has several pores aquaporins through which the waters and electrolytes move from the paracortex region into the venules and due to the movement of the water and the electrolytes the concentration in the paracortex region will increase so this is the main point about the high endothelium venule there are two uh, actually 90% of the lymphocytes comes from the high endothelium venule and 10% uh, comes from the afferent lymphatic venules next we will see what functions are performed by the lymph node there are two function which is performed by the lymph node first one is the filtration i'll write it here first one is filtration and second one is the immunity lymph node provide immunity filtration and immunity first we will discuss filtration actually when the lymph flow in the lymph node and move into the medullary region in medullary sinus there are several macrophages or reticulocytes are present reticular forms a fiber here i you can see let's pause this is a sinus and reticular forms a fibers collagen three fibers and different macro phages are also present in between them when the lymph pass through it enter the sinus and it will filter and exit the uh, sinus macro phages uh, if there are several bacteria cancer cells move into the sinus macro phages capture them 
and destroy them and clear lymph will exit through the sinus. So this is the filtration, how filtration occur in the limb. Next one is immunity. In immunity, there are two types of cell, B type, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. First, we will discuss T lymphocytes. Uh, when, uh, dendritic cells which are mainly present in the uh, skin and the mucous layers. Different uh, dendritic cells uh, capture the antigens over there and enter into the lymph through the afferent lymphatic vessels. Here you can see dendritic cell having antigen attached to the it. It will move and it will move through the cortical sinus and enter into the paracortex region. Enter into the paracortex region. In paracortex region, helper T lymphocytes activate. And after the activation of the helper T lymphocytes, they will proliferate. And after proliferation, they will move towards the, they will move into the sinus. And through the sinus, they exit through the afferent lymphatics and uh, afferent lymphatics and drain into the blood. And through the blood, they will reach to the site where bacteria or pathogens enter our body. And second one is the how B lymphocytes activate. Let's suppose if the uh, let's suppose dendritic cell having antigen attached attached to it, it enter into the cortical region, and this antigen will ahead there are different dendritic follicular dendrocytes present. They attach this antigen and Due to uh, they attach this antigen, and due to the uh, these attachment of the antigen, B lymphocytes which are present in the primary nodules activate, and due to the activation they convert into the secondary nodules. And there are two types of the cell form: memory B type and the plasma cell. Plasma cell. Plasma cell move. Uh, from the secondary nodule into the medullary cortex and the memory cell will move into the sinus and exit through the lymph afferent lymphatic system here we, plasma cell which enter into the medullary cords form different antibodies they will form different antibodies will release into the medullary sinus and through the medullary sinus it exits to the afferent and antibodies ultimately reach into the blood. Keep remember, plasma cells do not enter into the blood. But antibodies which is formed from the plasma cell enter into the blood and perform its function. So this is the basic structure. Hope so you understand what components are present in the lymph nodes. Thank you so much.